So we have sold our home here in Wyoming and we're going to build on the uh, one of the two half acres we own behind us. Um, partly to downsize because our last kid leaves in two years, but mainly to because we're able to make so much off this, we're going to like make our mortgage something we can pay off in just a couple of years, hopefully a few years. And so we've drawn a really simple home that I can do a ton of the work on and we are serving as our own general contractor. So that's the first time we've served as our own general contractor. Um, <clears throat> this is the plan, just an overview. I drew uh, these first two items I'm going to show you. So we've got a half acre lot. It's about 140, 150 by 150, it's kind of a square. Have a three car driveway, three car garage, a covered cement walkway, the house, a covered rear porch, and then we'll put a shed off to the side, plant a ton of grass, and a lean-to shed, which I put the gravel foundation in for already, and the greenhouse which is about 12 by 20, not 12 by 30. The power's in the corner. We've got irrigation coming in that's on in the summer as part of the farm fields around us. And I already planted raspberries and then roped it off so that it doesn't get run over. This is the house, three car garage, eight foot wide, 10 foot wide, eight foot wide. And you come in and there's a mud room and laundry to the right. There's a master bedroom to the left with the closet, a walk-in shower, and simple vanity. Um, there's a guest bath to the right with a tub shower. Then you come into the kitchen area. And so this is bigger than what uh, this, but it's the same basic idea, including most of the windows and stuff, only it's a little bit bigger. Well, substantially bigger in this house. Um, <clears throat> stove, island, fridge, sink, dishwasher, and then a huge walk-in pantry, which we love this pantry, but it's just too small. And so we wanted a really big one. And each of these squares is a foot. So I think this is seven by 12. So it'll be nice and big. And then you have the bedrooms off to the side, which two of these will be offices with hide beds in them, hide bed couches in them. And then this will be a permanent guest room with a double bed after our son moves out in a couple of years, otherwise it's his room. We'll have a wood burning stove, similar to what we have in here. And then there'll be a door going to a covered porch in the back that I'll build as a sloped metal roof and then a big a slab that's probably 12 by 20 or so. The living quarters of the house is 60 feet, corner to corner, by 36 feet, corner to corner. And then the garage is 30 feet wide and 36 feet deep. And that gives me space across the back to have shelves and a big workshop table and plenty of storage on the sides and this actual third bay is going to be my wife's workout room so we had someone who has a, a drawing program uh, and is somewhat savvy with that draw us some more technical plans so we could share those with those that we needed to But otherwise, we've been going off of this and sharing this with everyone. She also drew these. So here's looking at the garage doors coming in from the driveway from the street. Here's the east side of the home. So the bedrooms and offices. The west side, which has the views out into the farm fields and our living room area. The front door being here. And then the south side, which will have a covered patio sloping off of it. A roof sloping off of that side. So, we're pretty excited. 
we've actually gotten to the point where they're digging the foundation and I'll throw all of that, in, that into, we did that today, yesterday and today and put the water main in, but I'll interject a couple of other things that I videoed prior, <clears throat> trying to go back and do this a little bit sequentially, but it's out of order in real time. It's pretty exciting. We put together everything, put together all our people, and then we're laying out the things we're going to do as well. So, fun, fun. The excavator is here and he's scraping off the topsoil to one side and then he'll start digging out today. It's June 12th, so we're getting going. It's all starting. Pretty exciting. After day one, piling the dirt here, and you can see he's dug out pretty much half of it at least. <clears throat> Down four feet or so. Have a nine inch footing and then a four foot wall, and it'll stick up 12 inches. So, about the height of that guy right there. And it's just going to be a crawl space underneath and then a garage here, three car garage. So <clears throat> he's a one man operation. So he's <laughs> moving it twice with that um, excavator, which is a little bit slower instead of having a buck, a second guy in a bucket moving it and going twice as fast. But He's just, a, I kind of like it that he's a small operation and we can chat and talk through things and stuff like that. And then we dug <clears throat> the power line or power line trench back there to the back. And there's irrigation water that has these spigots right here. It runs down and we didn't realize it was only three feet deep because it's just summer water on for a couple months, a few months. And uh, so we pulled up the line and so we had to patch it in. I went and bought stuff from a local place called Mountain Star and we patched in the line. I got to throw some more clamps over there, but <clears throat> just the spigot line that runs up here between the properties. So looking good. Here comes the rain. Day one of digging in the books. Pretty exciting. Good day. Digging the water line <clears throat> trench. Should be six feet deep, I'm assuming. There it goes. Right here. City water and we're digging in to get inside the foundation. Pretty cool. So that last video was of, he's attaching a device to the water main and it'll create a, a connection. And then the white tube is called the pit. And it looks like it has the meter and all that stuff in it. And then he'll, that'll rise up and cap at ground level. So you can act, the city can shut off the water at that point. And then from that pit, I'm gonna run it comes out three quarter inch line. I'm going to do a three quarter inch stop and waste because that's all they, they only had. Well, three quarter inch stop and waste 
and then go up to one inch. We're gonna tee off. The one inch will continue. This will run to the house from here to the house. And then off of that, I'm gonna run this one inch stop and waste. When I, I would have just done two one inch stop and wastes within the one inch line, but they only had one and it would take several days to get another one. So I just, because he's coming out of the pit with three quarter inch and we have to go up to one inch anyway, I just threw the three quarter inch stop and waste. And then coming off, so this this will run to the house with the one inch line and we'll stub it up underneath the foundation. And then this will kick off and we'll run a line up to the surface and just stub it out of the ground. And this will be for my future irrigation system. And on both of these stop and waste, I'm gonna put the curb, curb box, which is this device. This sits over, over here and then comes up to the surface. And you can use the key to turn the, the water on and off. So I'll be able to shut off from here, everything going to irrigation and the house. And I'll be able to shut off just the irrigation with this. So that's the plan, we'll see how it goes. There's the backhoe, and he's coming with some sand to dump in here and hold this in place. And then he'll put some dirt on top of it from the city side out, basically, just to protect everything. And then we'll take over from that tube, which is the pit with the meter in it, out. Got the main line coiled in the crawl space and then we've run it six feet deep maybe a tad more <clears throat> this line curled up here will kick up and just stub out and that will be I'll hook a put a valve box in with the backflow preventers and then run my irrigation system off that and we put our valve or our stop and waste valve there and then we put a stop and waste valve here and we have he turned the water on to come to here so it's ready and we were going to use those curb and box deals but they only went up five feet and we couldn't get them to extend six so i returned them and we're going to use those valve box covers on top of four inch wide PVC pipes that'll slip down over here and come up with a valve box cover over it. So, and then we'll just use a long key to reach the valves. And we'll do that for both of these. And then we'll bury this in today. All right, here's those two posts. We'll stand them up straight. They'll cover those valves. 
can reach a long key down there. They're taller than I probably will have them be, but probably cut them off and then I'll drop those down on top. Once we have kind of a grade set, it's all coming together. He's grabbing a bunch of road base and dumping it there so he can, when he comes back to backfill, he can throw it in here and put a couple inches of clean surface down just to make it neat and tidy underneath for when we get under there. He's all got the house dug out and now he just needs to dig out the foundations of the, the garage and cement starts tomorrow they dropped off their forms so it's moving quickly exciting the rain's hanging out on the idaho mountains there just over the border state border good thing <laughs> glad we got this all done today tamped around. He's done digging this is the footing dig for the three car garage and then he'll when he comes to backfill he'll clean that out and they'll pour the floor of the garage but they're going to come over and start forming today <clears throat> and then of course the house with the crawl space so and the water stemmed up there so pretty exciting, moving forward. Pretty, pretty day, rainy day, supposed to rain all day today. So I think I'm gonna end video one right there. Uh, we live in the house over there, we sold it. We own these two half acre lots here in the small town in the mountains. And we decided to build on this lot because it sits against all the farm fields so and then we'll decide what to do with that other half acre so we've got one acre here and things should go well we'll document this as it unfolds i think um so we can remember it and others can follow along if they want to Something I did forget to mention is we are paying to have all this dirt hauled off that doesn't get backfilled because it's just boulders and gravel. It's a basically it's a riverbed. <laughs> so, and on that house, they spread it all over the yard and just created a boulder field. And so it was a nightmare bringing in topsoil. Anytime I needed to dig a hole, I couldn't trench for my sprinklers. And it just turned in a mess. So having it hauled off so that the foot or so of decent-ish topsoil, these used to be alfalfa farm fields, hay fields, what have you, for over 100 years probably. And uh, it has a decent foot of topsoil with some rock in it. Um, but not not too much so hopefully that'll be left as the topsoil we may have to do some leveling over there and backfill or bring in topsoil on that side because it does slope slightly 
So anyway, end of video one. Enjoy the journey with us.